This video is concerned with closing entries, the last step in the accounting cycle. The accounting cycle is a term that refers to the steps that accountants complete throughout the accounting period. During the period, accountants journalize transactions, that is, they record them in the general journal and then post them at the end of the period into the general ledger accounts. They balance the accounts and prepare a trial balance. They use the information on the trial balance to determine what adjustments are necessary. They then journalize and post the adjusting entries into the general ledger. They balance the accounts again, prepare another trial balance called the adjusted trial balance, and then from the adjusted trial balance information prepare the financial statements. Once the financial statements are prepared, it's time to close the temporary accounts. The temporary accounts are the revenue, the expense, and then in the case of a sole proprietorship, the drawing account, or in the case of a corporation, the dividends account. We use these temporary accounts to record transactions that could have been recorded in the permanent owner equity account, capital in the case of a sole proprietorship, or retained earnings in the case of a corporation. We did this so it would be easier here at the end of the accounting period to sort through all the information that we've recorded about owner equity and determine what the revenues and expenses were so that we could prepare an income statement and then determine what the withdrawals or the dividend payments had been so we can do the statement of owner's equity and the statement of retained earnings. Now at the end of the accounting period, after the financial statements have been prepared, it's no longer necessary to keep these account balances in the temporary accounts. We've already used the information to prepare the statements. And in fact, if we leave this information in these temporary accounts, we'll have a problem at the end of the next accounting period. What will be in the accounts will be an accumulation of this period's revenues and expenses and withdrawals, along with next periods, and it will be very difficult to do the next period's financial statements. Therefore, before we begin the next accounting period, we will close the balances in the temporary accounts. That is, we will transfer their balances from the temporary accounts into the real permanent owner equity accounts where they actually belong. On this slide, we're given a sample trial balance. This is the adjusted trial balance from which the financial statements were prepared. Now that the statements have been prepared, it will be necessary to close the temporary accounts. The yellow arrow illustrates this process. Some textbooks utilize sole proprietorship businesses in all their examples and illustrations. Other textbooks focus on corporations. Our video illustrates the closing entries for both types of businesses. We'll begin by looking at the closings for a sole proprietorship and will utilize the sole proprietorship accounts. If your textbook utilizes corporation accounts, you may want to take a little break. We'll get to the corporations in just a moment, but first let's begin by taking an in-depth look at the closing entries for a sole proprietorship. The effect of doing the closing entries is to adjust the balance in the capital account, the real permanent owner equity account, and make it equal to the value of the ending owner equity for the period. Illustrated on this slide is the statement of owner's equity that has been created from the trial balance on the previous screen. If the owner's beginning balance in capital was zero and the owner began the business by investing $5,000 in it this period, then the investment by the owner would have been the only thing recorded in the capital account and would account for its $5,000 current balance. However, net income was earned in the business and withdrawals were taken out of it. After net income is added and the withdrawals are subtracted, the actual ending owner equity for the period is $6,000. The effect of the closing entries will be to adjust the balance that is presently in the capital account, $5,000, and make it equal to the $6,000 value for owner equity at the end of the accounting period. Corporations utilize two accounts for owner equity. 
The common stock account is used for owner investments and retained earnings summarizes net income and dividend payments. A retained earnings statement prepared for our corporation would appear as shown here. The beginning balance in retained earnings would be zero since the corporation was just started up. Revenues minus expenses equal $3,000 and the net income would be part of the retained earnings account. Dividends are subtracted from retained earnings, so the ending balance in retained earnings is $1,000. Remember that the owner investment of $5,000 has been recorded in the common stock account. That balance plus the $1,000 in retained earnings is equal to the total stockholder equity in the corporation, $6,000. Again, the effect of doing the closing entries is to transfer the balances from the temporary accounts into the permanent owner equity accounts. These entries for a sole proprietorship are illustrated on the following slide. This slide illustrates the effect of making the closing entries. Notice that the revenue account has a credit balance of $8,000. When we close the revenue account by debiting it, the effect will be to remove its balance and transfer it into the capital account. Notice that the $8,000 credit balance in revenue has now moved as a credit to the capital account. Revenues increase owner equity. The expense account supplies must also be closed to the capital account. We'll need to record a credit to the supplies expense account with a debit to the capital account. The effect will be to transfer the $5,000 balance of supplies expense into the capital account as a debit. Debits reduce owner equity. The same thing will happen with the drawing account. We'll need to credit the drawing account for the $2,000 balance and then debit the capital account for the $2,000. This will reduce the balance in the drawing account to zero and decrease owner equity by the amount of the withdrawals debits reduce owner equity. This will leave us with a $6,000 balance in the capital account which as we know is the ending owner equity for the period. In the previous slide we described the closing process in a very direct manner. We closed the revenue and the expense account balances directly into the capital account. Businesses actually use a closing account or clearing account, as it's also called, in the closing entry process and close the revenue and expense account balances into it before closing it into capital. The title of that account is often income summary. When an income summary closing account is used, the revenues are closed into it and then the expenses are as well. In the illustration, we have two closing entries. One involves a debit to the revenue account to close its balance, and the other is a credit to income summary for the amount of the revenues. We then have a debit to income summary for the amount of the expenses with a credit to the supplies expense account for its balance. This will close out the supplies expense account and transfer its balance into income summary. The net effect then is that income summary is credited for the amount of the revenues and debited for the amount of the expenses. And if we have done the closing entries correctly, then the balance in income summary must be equal to net income. Since we've already done the income statement for the period, we know what net income is. And by using the closing account, we're able to verify the accuracy of our closing entries. The balance and income summary can now be closed into the capital account and this is illustrated on the slide in the first entry. We have a debit to income summary for its balance which is equal to net income with a credit to the capital account for the same value. This transfers the net income for the period into the capital account. The drawing account however was not closed to income summary and this is because withdrawals do not appear on the income statement. And since we wanted to get a balance in income summary equal to net income, they could not be closed into income summary. 
We must still close them out, however, so the last entry we'll make is illustrated here on the slide, is to debit the capital account and credit the drawing account for its balance. The effect here is to debit the capital account for the withdrawals that were made during the period. So after crediting capital for the net income and debiting capital for the withdrawals, the balance in the capital account will be equal to the ending owner equity for the period. All the temporary accounts have now been closed out and the balance in the capital account has been adjusted and made equal to the ending owner equity for the period. Note that the corporation will close net income and then dividends into the retained earnings account. The balance that's left in retained earnings represents the undistributed profits of the business. These earnings have been retained within the business and can be used for other purposes. We have now completed the closing entries so there should be no balances left in any temporary accounts. If we were to prepare the trial balance now, it would appear as is shown on this slide. There are no balances left in drawing, revenue, or supplies expense, and the balance in the capital account has been adjusted and made equal to the ending owner equity for the period. Here we have the corporation post-closing trial balance compared with the post-closing trial balance for our proprietorship. We can see again that all the temporary accounts, dividends, revenue, and expense have been closed into the retained earnings account. Here we see our post-closing trial balance compared with the balance sheet for our sole proprietorship. We want to point out here that after closing, the only accounts left with balances are the permanent, the real, the balance sheet accounts. The temporary accounts have all been closed and we're now back to the balance sheet. If we take a quick look at our corporation balance sheet, we'll see that the same is true. This ends our video and I hope it's been helpful to you.